punch early. It seemed like your guys didn't really uh, get phased by the hot shooting. What did you like about the response, particularly in that second quarter? Yeah, I thought it started late in the first with that group uh, with Lindy, Isaiah, Trey, Mike, and Shea. That's the, those, that's the group that got the game kind of stabilized. Uh, obviously, we made some shots there, but it was really like the defensive intensity you needed to pick up. They made all those threes early, and I thought it was a byproduct of rhythm and physicality. You know, we just weren't uh, in the ball enough, you know, and, and they got some confidence early. I thought that group was one that turned the game. Second quarter defense was great. Second half defense was pretty good. I thought they earned the stuff they got in the second half. And Shea just continues to be great in the third quarter. He's averaging the third most points of any player in the third quarter since like 1996. What, what is he doing coming out of halftime um, to be so effective scoring? Uh, you can ask him, but you know he's obviously a really good player that's playing 12 straight minutes most nights. You know, so he's accumulating all the minutes you can get there. Um, but I thought he had a nice balance tonight too. Like he had a cool 33. It wasn't didn't seem forced. Obviously did a great job of finding guys throughout the game. Um, good awareness I thought out of him of just how they were guarding him and and where he could leverage his gravity. And then Tuesday's game will be number 41 on the season for you all. Just was wondering if you could kind of reflect on the first half of the season to this point and um, maybe some growth spots and things that you've really enjoyed seeing from your team. Uh, I mean, I think we've definitely grown. Uh, I think the the thing that we're pleased with is high level of professionalism. Guys that attack the program and work um, do so with humility. You know, grow from all the experiences. There's a lot of ups and downs in the season, and I think it's important to point out that like that mindset has been in place. You know, it's not just this season. You know, like we've been honing that from the minute every one of these players has stepped in the door. And ultimately, that's what we're going to double down on continuously as we move forward. We've got a long way to go, obviously. Um, but, you know, those like basic tenants are, are what, you know, we're most pleased with to this point and what is most important moving forward. Andrew Schlecht of The Athletic. This felt like the quintessential Kenneth Williams game. Can you speak to what he means to the team overall and just his play tonight uh, I mean he's just got great soul you know he's just got you know that X factor he's just a really tough authentic team first dude you know that has a lot of equity with everybody that he touches and, and just the integrity of that person is is impressive I think the fact that he's 28 years old and he's he's who he is is a really powerful signal to the rest of the guys who are trying to find who they are, you know, as people and as NBA players. And, um, you know, we could talk, he made all the Cameron Williams plays tonight, but what really uh, I respect about him is, is that, that kind of intangible that I'm describing. And it's just, you can't put a price on uh, the impact that that has on the group. And the play, the play that you challenged, it looked like Kenrich gave you like the go-ahead, like you should challenge this. Is that something that you even think about when he looks at you and says that? Uh, yeah, I tell those guys, you know, I ask them, I give them credit. I asked Eugene a couple plays before if he fouled the guy. He said, yeah, I fouled him. You know, like they know you only get one, and they try to be honest there. And that's a secret weapon, you know, with those plays. You know, it's hard to get all the replays. Um, it's You're in a time-sensitive situation. So when they're pretty convicted, uh, it's not just him. It's all of them. Um, and the game wasn't over at that point. You know, that was a, a opportunity to get a possession back. Yeah, um, kind of touched on it earlier, but you went with that shooters lineup a little bit um, or a lot tonight and kind of went with the shooters lineup the other night. Um, what are you liking from that group outside of them? giving you guys the energy you need yeah i mean great gravity you know on the court and when you put shea out there with them and his ability to to draw a crowd it really is a dilemma for the defense you know that's that's kind of where it starts but you need to make sure that the scoreboard can move in the right direction you know you can't just sell out on one end of the floor and the the secret ingredient um with that lineup is those guys compete you know, like Lenny Waters tonight defensively, that was about as complete of a game as he's played. He was outstanding. Isaiah Joe competes. Trey has learned how to compete. He had his, uh, he stole the ball from a big on a on a pass over the top tonight. Shea takes on harder matchups with that unit. He guarded Ben Caro the other night with that unit out there. Uh, and Mike, we've documented well that he's a competitor. And so um, that's, you know, what I'd like to shine the spotlight on. Obviously, the shooting is the reason you think about it, the reason you do it. But what allows you to do it is those guys really compete. Yeah, eight turnovers tonight, ten the other night. Um, just talk about how 
you guys are protecting the ball and valuing possessions more and more lately? Yeah, it's not really like a protection mindset. We still want to attack. I think it's like an earliness of our plays. You know, when you make the early play and the simple play, uh, you limit your turnovers. When you're late to those plays or, um, you know, you're passing reactively to the defense, I think that's when you get in trouble. Um, and I thought the guys the last couple of games have played a very simple offensive game. I thought, you know, the first half – really from the last like 16 minutes of the first half was like as good from a process standpoint as we've played offensively. Pierce Lawson, Valley Sports, you mentioned Lindy's night and I know when he's w with the blue, his homework is, is on that defensive end. He's had a couple of games here where he's been really active just in terms of rim protecting and getting in passing lanes. Just how have you seen him uptick um, so far this season on the defensive end? Yeah, I think he's shown a great, him, Trey um, and Isaiah have shown a great awareness of um, how they can round their game out as players. The reason they're in the NBA is the offense, obviously. Um, but the way to stay in the NBA, the way to play in the NBA is you've got to have a rounded game. And um, those guys have done a hell of a job, you know, with everything we've put in front of them. And Lindy's a great example. Um, and, and we jerk him around a little bit, you know, in terms of up, down, in, out, um, which I would actually argue builds mental toughness in these guys. Uh, but he just doesn't flinch. I mean, whatever we throw in front of him, he's ready for. And Wiggins, Amarui, Jay Will, those guys are all like that. And it seemed like there were just like a, a lot of hard-nosed plays. Now we talked about Kenrich's night, but a lot of guys with, with blocks, steals, get in passing. Shea finishing through contact. Just how big of an impact did those sort of just tough physical plays make tonight? Uh, huge. They're important every night. And the thing, you know, you guys were asking before the game about Doncic being out and like the psychological impact of that. I understood we had to earn the win, you know, and that was a sign of maturity to me. Kind of want to double down on what you just got through talking about. Jalen Brown came in here last week and saying when they found out that SGA was a scratch, they kind of let down. That's a very veteran team that's played high stakes. It's the youngest team in the NBA when they found out Doncic was, and you just kind of alluded to it, but could you just go a little bit further about this very young team understanding the assignment still? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, a testament to their maturity and their commitment level. Um, and really, it's it's zero and zero mindset. It's 48 minute game. It's being where your feet are inside of the game. All the stuff to Nick's question that we tried to been you know investing in and that we'll continue to invest in. It shows up every night in different ways, and that's how it manifested tonight. Josh picked up his uh, fifth foul pretty early in the third quarter. You subbed him out and then brought him back in around the 10 minute mark. I just wanted to ask you about the process and decisions with things like that where. You obviously want to save him for later in the game, but you don't necessarily want to miss a window of getting him in earlier. Yeah, I mean, we're we're probably the most aggressive team. Or I shouldn't say the most. I don't know that. We're a very aggressive team in terms of playing guys with fouls. Uh, we got a guy named Ezra who is in our data science bullpen, and uh, – that's where, you know, like analytics, all the, I mean, they're like building computers. I mean, it's like rocket science in there. And I have no idea what they do, by the way. But uh, he, Ezra, who works for us, a couple of years ago grabbed me and was like, why do coaches sit guys for foul trouble? And he kind of talked me through the rationale and how, like, you know, the minute, a minute in the second quarter is equal to a minute in the fourth quarter. Two points in the second quarter is equal to two points in the fourth quarter. Um, and so that's kind of what started us down this path of like, you know, playing guys through it a little bit. And what we've learned is that, you know, some of that, like Josh didn't foul out tonight, play the last 10 minutes of the game. Um, and you end up fouling the player out, you know, if you get them earlier than that. So shout out to Ezra. Anybody else? Kind of on that same note, Josh couldn't really get it going early and then got in foul trouble, but he came back and he hit two big shots. Does that kind of speak to where he's at from a confidence standpoint right now? Well, when I put him back in at the 10-minute mark, I said, don't play the fouls. I said, play defense. If you don't play defense, then you might as well not be out there. And so I thought um, what helped him work through the game tonight was he got himself lost in the things he could control. You know, his offense wasn't really going early. His defense wasn't going early. Um, and I thought when he got back out there, like he, he was locked into both of those things. And he allowed the game to kind of turn around for him. And I think that's a sign of a mature player. You know, he's learning the length of the game in that experience and obviously did a good job of it tonight. Anybody else? All right. See you guys.